Time for bed. But Christmas is tomorrow. I'm too excited to sleep. Would you go to sleep if I told you a bedtime story? Okay. Was the night before Christmas, and Mommy and the kids were worried about Daddy when they heard about the bus crash on the radio. But Daddy came home safe and sound, and it was the best Christmas ever. Yay! However, everybody on the packed bus died, and their family spent Christmas Day identifying bodies and planning funerals. What the f Christmas Carol Catastrophes, a podcast about the oddest Christmas songs ever unleashed on an unsuspecting public, starts November 17th. No, really, what in the actual f***? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Grabel, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I'm speaking with Amanda from One Nothing. Hey Amanda, thanks for speaking with me today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Now, when I first started listening, which is when I wrote these notes, so we'll, we'll be completely honest here. <laughs> uh, when I wrote those notes, I'd listened to one episode, I think, and I've listened to three since. Okay. And three others. So I've listened to four in total. Um, and Hopefully they're getting better as you go. <laughs> I, I did the mistake, I think, of listening to one early, then one later, another one late that was from later, and then another one that was episode two. And I thought, you know, if I'd have listened to them in order, I'd have seen, I'd have seen the progression, seen of, a, audio progression of the audio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for, for anybody who's listened, who's read that latest uh, blog of mine where I mentioned about, because I said something about the Isadora Duncan episode, I put, it's a shame that the sound quality is so low. Because I said the quality of the actual uh, what you're talking about is top rate, and that's what I said oh, in thanks. in my blog. You know, the, the actual information that is there is in there is really quality. Uh, you know, product. It's just the sound that that is a bit of a problem on that episode yeah. too. No, if I totally you, understand. But if you turn your volume up enough, you'll get a really good episode about the the dancer <laughs> Isadora Duncan. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that, that the, the work went into it. We just did not have the tech, unfortunately, as baby podcasters, and we paid for it with the first couple episodes that are out there for us. But it does get better as you go if you stick with it. We do improve on our technology and well, get a little he, better sounding. Here's a quick fix for you. You could get a piece of software for the older episodes. You could get a piece of software that's called Levelator. Okay, okay. Levelator. And if you put Put that whole episode through L E V E L A T O R. T O R. And okay. if so, you put your sound through as a WAV file, not as an MP3, but as a WAV. It only works with WAVs, but you can convert from MP3 to WAV. And then you put it through that, it will level all of it to the same level, all the voice, all the okay. way through. But then what I do is when I've done that with with sound, I will knock off about three decibels or something off it because it's really loud otherwise. So you just make it a nice, comfortable volume so it's not distorted. So use the levelator okay. and then knock off three. I appreciate that. Thank you. Levelator.com and make it a web form. Got it. There you go. Thank you. But you could do I'm that with learning. the older episode. There we go. So, I mean, so when I wrote this, I wrote, first of all, the interest of true crime but it's a lot more than that your show it's not just that which is what the first episode sounds like it sounds like oh it's another it's a really good true crime show but then later on you've got these um for instance the interview that you did with the with the police officer from new york who would then went to become a police officer in florida i think yeah, yep. exactly right. That was an incredible dis discussion, a really good chat, but also really good to get those great anecdotes off him and those great stories about crimes and how he um, worked those crimes. And that is really good. 
in detail information from him. And he was also giving the information away. It felt comfortable because it was like he was giving the information away without you even saying it. You'd go, oh, I'll just tell you about this. And you're like, well, you know, it's like gold. I wasn't turning him down. <laughs> As a podcaster, that's gold. Like, yeah, go on then. Just just go. That's what Make I'm after. You know? Yeah. yeah so, I absolutely agree. So, yeah, it's a lot more than that now. How would you explain the show to people? So we don't really fit into any one genre. And like you said, true crime probably is what we would fit best if you're looking at like Apple categories, but we ultimately just focus on fatalities. So typically that'll be animal attacks, which, you know, we kind of rotate through between animal attacks, murders, and freak accidents. Um, And then every 10 or so episodes, we'll have a survivor. So we had a a couple survivors of animal attacks come on and share their story. And then we just pepper in whatever kind of relates to that. So we got the opportunity to speak to Vic, that officer. And he had, I first thing I said was, do you have any murder stories? He's like, yeah. I said, we want you. So <laughs> just anything relating to fatalities really is, we is, you know, we don't really have a category that fits that out there, but that's essentially what we're, what we're about is just getting the stories of people who passed, telling stories about what they were like when they were alive and how they died. And then if we can learn anything from that. Yeah. I mean, one, one of my, uh, one of my best friends is actually a police officer. I mean, England is different because, you know, although saying that yeah. he he is actually a trained marksman, which is pretty cool for a Brit because we don't normally, wow. we don't normally carry guns over here. Yeah. So he was one of the um, uh, police officers. He was called away from where he was stationed to go and be, you know, when we had the, we had attacks, terrorist attacks as well, when the buses would, were, you know, right. the, the bus bombs, uh, Do you recall that? Yeah. And so my my friend was relocated from where he was based at to, in 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 Bath. He was relocated to London to be a sharpshooter, essentially, no just in case. Yeah. So I think mm, he was he was him. stationed there for a few months. But 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 yeah, he was saying to me that he said that when he f- did his first uh, walked in on his first uh, death in in a thing, he said he said it was like completely different to what you see on television or any of these shows or whatever and he said he, he just yeah it's it sounds it sounds disgusting actually yeah yeah i've seen a little too too much in terms of crime scenes and stuff and doing research for a lot of things so i've i've seen a lot of not fit for television kind of imagery and i can only imagine what it's like to witness that in person if it's that emotionally scarring to just see a photo of it so those people i appreciate them for what they do and how they're able to walk around even half normal with all of that in their head. <laughs> you know, it's truly amazing. It's a sacrifice. It really is. So what, what do you think it is about? Cause you know, we're not going to beat around the bush. There are a lot of shows that go under that, you know, they, they call, you know, it's like you said, you know, people pigeonhole podcasts. So mm-hmm. the, the, the pigeonhole of true crime, there's a lot of it in podcasting um mm-hmm. but like i say to people it's the individual presenters of shows and the people creating those shows that makes shows you know be listened to by people because what people are listening for they're listening for the information and the details and that you know the, the great quality there which yours has got but at the same time they're listening for people that they can in a sense almost get on with and they're listening to that person and how that person approaches all these people who do this show approach it. So what do you think it is about true crime that makes it such a large, you know, show, you know, where there's so many shows. I I think a lot of it is just the, the factor of humans always wanting to have an answer or an explanation to something. And there's just so many stories out there that are forgotten. There's so many unsolved crimes. There's so many crimes that are just completely baffling and that are, just totally heinous. And I just think it's human nature to be curious about what it is about somebody who can commit those things and how that differs from, I don't want to say normal people, but people who don't have violent thoughts or, you know, any intention to want to hurt other people. So I just think it's just that there's so many people that are interested in it, that it became almost like a niche where everybody feels they have something they can add to the conversation, which I think is great. I mean, there's more than enough cases to go around of all types. And it just seems like a lot of times there's the main ones that are kind of repeated, but there's all these little tiny cases and and murders and fatalities that some of them have 
never been heard by our generation or even the generation before it. So it's kind of refreshing to bring some of that back and to showcase somebody who maybe passed, you know, 80 or 100 years ago that people forgotten about. So I just think there's so much that there's nothing old. I think if it were if it were a finite category where everybody was like regurgitating the same stories, I think it would fizzle out and be old because it's, you know, just such a limited topic. But because there's so much to talk about, I think it's just everyone has something that they can add to it. Yeah. I love it. I listen to yeah. a, a whole bunch of other true crime podcasts and both for entertainment and to kind of like learn new things. But I just, I love the topic. It's exciting to me kind of to enter that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you know, there's there's so much scope there. For for instance, I mean, I've already spoken with uh, B. Nicole. Uh, she's been on my show. She does a show called Buried on the Tundra, on the Tundra, oh, okay. and that that is all just about these these crimes that have happened and these murders that have happened in Alaska alone. Oh, and she, I bet she, that's And so that's been good. going for that's been going for about three years, and she's wow. she's. Yeah, just she, off of Alaskan yeah, murders. Just, just off of Alaskan murders. Wow. And, you know, although she's been she's been off for a while because she she got married. Uh, congratulations. Well, congratulations. That's sweet. Yeah. I haven't heard of them. I'll have to look them up. What's their name again? Buried on the tundra. Buried on the tundra. Yeah. Always looking for new, interesting, unique true crime things. So thank you. It and congratulations too, on yeah. the wedding. <laughs> it won't take too much time. They're only ten to fifteen minutes each. Oh, I love it. Quick, easy. Love it. A good show to catch up on. Yeah, good for when you're driving and can't devote the full hour. Yeah. Just just leave it play and drive and listen to the episodes one after the other. Mm-hmm. Job done. Get scare myself in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have nightmares of being buried somewhere. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's not a subject I thought I'd be bringing up. Uh, <laughs> so, so what was your inspiration for starting this show then? Oh my gosh, I wish I had like a more like soul fulfilling explanation for this question. But it, I honestly, I never listened to a single podcast before about a year ago, like ever in my life. It just was something okay. I never thought I'd see myself into. I like reading and I like television, but I'm like listening to somebody talk. Who wants to do that? So I found my first podcast by accident um, because my Apple, I got a new phone and the Apple podcast was already on it. And one thing led to another and I found this podcast and they're called Tooth and Claw. It's an animal attack podcast. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that you could have podcasts where you can actually share information about animals and talk about things you're passionate about and that people are receptive of that. So I just, there was a few, I ran through their whole catalog so fast and they have like a hundred and something episodes out and I ran through them all so quick. Um, and then I was like, oh gosh, I want to, there's so many things that I want to know about that they haven't talked about. And I was like, it's going to take me years if I'm waiting for them to report on every story that I want to hear. So I just kind of decided why not to start one myself and talk about what I'm passionate about, which is, you know, I do love animal attacks. I also love freak accidents and some murders that have that kind of peculiar shock value to them. I just, those are most interesting to me. So I just figured I would start a podcast because if anything, even if nobody listens, I'm still learning about these cases that I want to learn about. So kind of boring, but yeah, I just on a whim. <laughs> it's, it's not really. I mean, if, if you think about it, it's almost similar to these people that have like uh, theories you know, I, I was saying to somebody, we're on about the, the conspiracy theories of, you know, there's this, 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 and this. And I think I was saying to the person that for a lot of people, I think there's this almost innate need to look into something and try to work out what 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 happened, how did it happen? And it, it, it it's almost like everybody's their own little little di- detective in a little sense. Little investigator. Yeah, yeah. no, I completely relate. I'm very much, I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to, I want to know the details. I want to know what happened. I'm very much that, that way. <laughs> I do think sometimes that people make up these or come up with these things just because they want something yeah, as well. Few, sometimes there's a few out there that are, I've fallen across, like I got really invested in a story once that I did actually for our Patreon. And I probably did three hours of research into it before I discovered that the video I was researching didn't actually belong to the case that I was researching, that they were two separate 
incidents entirely, but the media had reported it wrong for so much that so much of, I mean, it was like three and a half hours of research. And I was like, oh my gosh, all down the drain, because this isn't even the story, but I was able to twist it and include both stories and explain how the media also messed up in reporting that. So it was kind of interesting to, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I need to know the story. I need to know, I don't just listen to a newspaper article. I need to know facts. I need to know witness testimonies and court documents. And I'm weird about needing to know. It's it's a very literal case of these memes where you find like the members of Queen on a photograph and it says the Beatles underneath. I know it's stuff like that. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. So I just I hate that. And the world of AI where you can't even tell if it's a photo or a computer image. I'm so unhappy with that development <laughs> in our technology process. I, I had a group chat with a lo- lot of podcasters about that Ooh, a few months ago. We had a, ch- mm. a group chat that's on my feed that's all about um, AI. And uh, one of the guests was somebody who actually creates podcast using AI voices. I've heard of that where you just type it out and have them read it out. I've considered that because I don't exactly feel like I have the best voice for audio format. I just, maybe it's a personal thing, but I don't love it, but... I don't think that you can convey the emotions and the 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 humor and the little nuances that we do in human speech with AI. I just don't think it's at that point. I think it can read from a script okay, but I think it's not going to be able to to deliver those dramatic pauses and the subtle nuance, you know, before a climax of a story. It's just there's little things it'll miss in my opinion. It's a hot topic at the moment is AI. It is. It caused a lot of problems for the actors unions. Artists too. They're having yes. their work replicated yep. and without any kind of royalties for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mentioned on that show, there was somebody who was, um, it was filmed in a studio or something, or what was it? Or we recorded some dialogue in a studio for, he um, was the voice behind one of the Power Rangers or oh. something. Uh, so he recorded, I think, for about about two hours of footage and got paid for doing that two hours. Wow. And they were saying in this in this piece about it that those two hours were used in three films and a couple of seasons of a television series, but he only got paid for two hours' work. It's not fair. No. If he's no. being paid at all, is even a miracle, because I think I read somewhere that all of at least in graphics, all of the artificial intelligence art that's out there is collected and pooled from millions and millions of artists work. And that's how it pulls these details to be able to make their, so the photos might be original, but they're collecting themes from people's art who aren't being compensated for it. So I don't like AI anything at this point. I know it probably has its place and advantage in society, but I don't think it's in entertainment or art in any form. I think that's the one thing we have as a species for self-expression. So don't take it from us. (laughs) That is true. This is Dave of Live Life Loud, the Decibolic Podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. Marv. How has the show evolved then from what it started to where it is now? Uh, It's evolved in a number of ways. I mean, when I started this, I really didn't anticipate it going anywhere. I did not think that I read all the statistics that, you know, typically podcasts don't last more than 20 episodes and they don't get so many, you know, downloads and they're not met with as much support. And we started with nothing. I had a junky old 15 year old laptop. I had no microphones, I had no headphones, and we we just completely won it for the first one. And I mean, you can literally hear my neighbors fighting in the background and like cars driving by. Um, and it was funny, but I left it. So I was like, if anything, I want this to document like what the journey is really like for someone who's entering this. Yeah. So as much as I hate my first couple episodes and I wish I could remove them, I leave them up because it does show our growth throughout the show. And so for people who might listen to that episode first, they may be dissuaded and turn it off and that stinks. But for people who stick with it and listen to more, they're going to see our growth through the show. And so we got new technology, better microphones, Uh, We've learned how to edit better and how to control the variables when recording and and knowing kind of how to compensate for, you know, those kind of issues like background echoes and electrical hums and things like that. Um, And then just the support that we've seen. I mean, we're not by any means like a big and famous up and coming 
Apple listed, you know, we were on Apple, but we're not like recommended or anything, but that's okay. Uh, But we actually wound up number one on good pods for two or three days in a row above Dateline NBC and above um, Morbid and all of these really big names. So even though that was a smaller, it's a tiny site. um, So it's not like, it's not the Oscars by any means, but it was a huge accomplishment just for us because it was our list that we were on that we made number one. And it's just exciting and it's motive. It's like a um, motivation to continue. So people are receptive. We have a really great tight knit community of people who are extremely supportive. I have uh, co-hosts that have joined me through the time. I picked up Rachel, my first co-host. And then a few episodes later, I met David and he started co-hosting. And now we have a really great show where we're all just, we just laugh and, and have a good time. And then we tell some really traumatic stories, but we're free to feel our feelings. We're not of the feelings that because we're discussing death, we can't laugh or we can't make jokes. There's parts of death that are just going to be funny. And we allow ourselves to feel that. And we allow our listeners to feel that without judging them um, for laughing at anything. I mean, it's it's traumatic and it's devastating. We all acknowledge that. We know that. But it's okay sometimes to chuckle at some of the funnier parts. Yeah, it's a bit like uh, news shows, you know, where on a news program you get, you get like, oh, here's the sad news. Here's this, this and this. And then at the end you get the, and finally... Uh, yeah. d- dog on water skis exactly awesome. you know. so i like to say that we um we may bring you down a little but we bring you back up before the end so <laughs> that's why i loved that that uh patreon episode that you put on your normal feed where you've oh, got yeah. like it's very serious for the most part and a bit sort of it's scary actually in some some parts and then uh, but then you know you get to the end and you've got that really fun game where you're trying to tell a story. <laughs> so one person says one thing and then the other person has to carry on from there. And it was hilarious. Oh you know? my gosh. And we've got yeah. probably 12 games that we rotate through that we play on Patreon. So it's it's a really good time. And we always have a guest on. And it's usually one of our followers or supporters on social media. But sometimes it's a friend like Tommy with Let's Get Freaky. Uh, and it's just so fun to bring them on and to, you know, we all learn about something together and then we just have some laughs and some good times. And that's basically what our main episodes are like, too, but we don't play as many games. Well, I know that Tommy's lawn must be very tidy because he keeps mowing it. <laughs> all day long. It's all he could think about. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you decide what topics that you're going to talk about? Well, just honestly, it's most part it's things that I find over time on different social media. I'm in a lot of like Reddit threads. I'm in a lot of, I don't know. I think my, oh, I can't remember the algorithm on my social media is just set to produce that for me now because it knows it's just what I'm interested in. So I'm just constantly getting videos pushed to me of animal attacks and and stories about freak accidents. Occasionally a listener will write in and recommend something that I haven't heard and we'll do that as a story. Uh, but it's if it interests me and somebody died doing it, it goes in pretty much. So <laughs> it's um it's a bit like my my Netflix, uh, because I don't get to watch that much on there now. My next Netflix feed now is based on things that my other half watches and not what I used to watch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So much like that. Yeah. I get just like a constant stream of content ideas to me whenever I log on to Instagram. So that's it's nice to have that. But it's also nice because a lot of times the videos don't come with any kind of information and it'll just be a, a vague vo- video and you don't know any of the backstory so we get to go in and break it down and tell the real story which is always good that is like great. that tiger video that everybody's seen that was a good one the topic choices and then the guests that you have you've sort of touched on that because you've you've said that you'll have people who are listeners to the show or friends uh but then that, that, i'm going to keep i'm going to come back to that police officer again i mean how did you get hold of him so he actually found us. He, I don't even know from where, but we had just friended each other on Instagram and I posted about something and he just messaged and he said, you know, I really love what you're doing with the show. I'm a retired NYPD officer. I feel like I could add some stuff. And so we chatted a little bit back and forth and I was all for it because so often you get to hear from the witnesses perspective or the podcasters perspective, or even the family's perspective, but it's very rare. You get to hear things from the officers that are handling these cases. So I jumped on it. And the second he said, he'd be willing to share some stories about the different murder cases he worked on. It was, it was setting a date and going for it. So I don't, I don't linger on opportunities when they pop up like that. I I take them if they're like of that level, of course. And 
you've given me an idea now, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. Oh. I mean, I, I mean, a, a, an interesting one might be if you had an officer that worked on a specific case or somebody worked on a specific case, and then you could do a deep dive episode on that specific case, perhaps, and talk over with them yeah. each level of how that case evolved from the original it getting called in to to what they did on the scene and how it went from there. That would be fascinating. We've actually, my co-host and I have talked about doing that and, and bringing Vic and maybe we've made a couple other officer friends too. So maybe bringing them in and, and kind of bringing up a case and seeing their perspective of it and walking us through what they would do if they were investigating it. I don't know. I have to look into the freedoms of what they can talk about. Yeah. Um, with cases that they're directly involved in, but I would imagine as long as we don't name names or personal information that we would be okay. But that is something we've tossed around doing. So funny that you should bring that up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the way around that would be to perhaps agree beforehand on assumed uh, names of people. That would be a and, good one. And something like that to be able to cover for that, perhaps. That's a good idea. Yeah, give them fake names can't remember the name for that but yeah you could just have the name of the real person on one side of the paper and the name of the fake name on the other so long as you don't forget to <laughs> so fix it you, yeah. you're doing the person that's <laughs> on the right not the person that's on the left or the other way around yeah scrap that and post right just edit yeah. it right out <laughs> <laughs> unless you're a video and then you've got to really mess about with the video oh, then you're oh, really oh, messed no. up no. oh gosh oh dear I'm not looking forward to having to edit video for for my podcast when when those days come up and I make really bad mistakes. I'm not looking forward to that. I just finally mastered audio editing, so I'm not really ready to venture into video editing just yet. I I have to now because there's a a company that's putting my podcast onto Roku devices so people can watch them on Roku. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Look at you moving up. I know. Cool. Trying, trying. That's incredible. Good things to come. This is Arthur Dude from Slam City, the world's first Quantumino powered podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us. So, what sort of research then do you do leading up to the episodes? Is it di- <sighs> well, so I mean, much. <laughs> so much because it depends on whether you're doing a show about a specific person or if you're doing a show where you're talking to somebody the different types of research of course absolutely so the well the more well-known cases are definitely easier um the murders definitely are easier because there's usually court documents a lot of times the freak accidents also have that the animal attacks are tricky because a lot of times you're just going off of circumstantial evidence and we have no idea what their final moments were like or what really transpired so I do allow some freedom um, with those cases. I don't misrepresent facts, but I'll I'll often, you know, prelude by saying we don't know what happened, but it probably went something like this. And then I'll kind of create what more than likely happened. Um, for research, I utilize usually I try to find like a really good uh, peer reviewed source like Wikipedia, and then I'll go, I'll write down the facts and then I'll cross check them. So if I don't find that fact listed on any other credible source, I'll scrap it and I won't include it. But if I do see it repeated somewhere else that's credible, I'll include it. Um, the hardest thing is for these incidents that happen in non English speaking countries because their media doesn't report in English. So having to find media articles in other languages has proven challenging and it's an arduous process, but I've used Google translate to kind of type what I want. And then I translate it to the language. And then I search that language, translate every article that pops up in the results till I find something that sounds like it's the case I want. So it's arduous and it can take hours, but I'm proud of saying that all the information that we compiled is from like legitimate sources that's been repeated more than once. And yet we haven't been called out for any mistakes that we've touched on as of yet if we ever do i'll be more than happy to make a little correction but so far we've got a pretty good track record of not really getting any facts wrong google translate is a good ai that we use sometimes (laughs) although sometimes it does make mistakes it does make mistakes. Yeah, it can't be 100%, but it's it's a helpful tool when you're just trying to figure out what articles are are relevant to the case that you're researching. So, yeah. Yeah, all, all you're doing basically with that is you're looking at the information and then you put that, then you use that information for your research and it's like myself, you know, I might come up with things for my show and things, but I don't say it verbatim. I it, oh, no, I sort of yeah. like use it to base 
what I'm going to say around yeah. that. So. Yeah, constructing the story with facts. And then if there's anything unknown, I'm very transparent about that. I will outright say, I don't know, or I didn't look into this, or I couldn't find anything on this. And so I do try. That's probably my other biggest priority above just being entertaining is just making sure that whatever we're putting out there is accurate. Um, because I would just hate for something that I say somebody believes it and gets a fact wrong and hurts somebody over it or hurts you know the feeling of a family member if they were to listen. So I'm really diligent in making sure I get all my facts correct and that we're respectful about the victims, but everything else is fair game for humor. <laughs> so how do you actually record and then edit the show? So right now we are using Podcastle, which is like a web-based recording app. We are probably looking to change that because we haven't really been super happy um, we do have the paid version and it's not really indicative of the money that we're spending. I, I don't find it worth it. Um, so right now we are, we're still using them for the time being with minimal issues, but we're looking to find a web-based recording app that meets our needs that has zero issues in a perfect world. So we're in the middle of that, but right now we still use Podcastle. Yeah. I'm sort of, I mean, mine renewed itself with Zoom uh, for recording that renewed itself in, in a sense I wish it hadn't in a way because I'm having problems with Zoom. In oh, the no. fact, I was just going to ask you fact, how you like Zoom. <laughs> only in the fact that you might get separate feeds, but those separate feeds are recorded sort of from this end in in, in essence. So if you get a problem with the signal from I, from anybody that you're talking to, you still get a bad signal. Whereas if I'm being honest, if I could, I'd have cancelled the contract with Zoom and I might have gone to Zencaster instead because with Zencaster, you get a clean feed that's directly from each person's own device. So that way you don't get any signal degradation at all. You get like a really clean signal from everybody and that's on the video and on the on the sound as well. So, I mean, that would probably be a better, better option. I've in looked essence. into Zencaster. Yeah, I've definitely looked into that. Um I would, I don't know if Zencaster allows you to edit right in there. It, I haven't looked that much into it, but if it does, that's definitely a contender. But I, I just want a website that I can record and edit all on the same platform and it doesn't have hiccups or drop people or delete random segments of audio. So we haven't really been thrilled with Podcastle nor their support. If I'm being honest, they um, leave some things to be desired in the customer support side. But I hear that other people have really great experiences. So best power to them. But I do not have good experiences. You've got Riverside as well that some people use, and there's some other. Yeah. Ones I tried as Riverside, well. and that one also was problematic. So I didn't go back to that. And I was actually thinking about Zoom, but now that you're having issues with Zoom, I don't know that that's a contender either. So there's it's just so many yeah. out there. It's only a problem if there's any if there's any signal problems with any of the guests. That's mm. that's the problem. Or with your own signal, which I mm. sometimes do have as well. Sometimes pretty good about like our host signal. It's just you can't control our guests. Sometimes they use their phones, and sometimes they're using Wi-Fi. And it's I hate when their audio goes out, and you have to restart the whole recording room just to be able to continue recording. So it's obnoxious, and it's a time waster. And I just would like to make sure our guests know that we respect their time and not make them jump through a bunch of tech hoops just yeah. to record with us. <laughs> yeah. That's why I try not to get people to use stuff where they have to download software to be able to join a chat with me really as well, which yeah. you wouldn't have to on, on Zencaster or, well, you don't have to on Zoom, really. You could just join in in the browser. Yeah. Hi, this is Zach from Belated Binge Harry Potter, and you're listening to Pods Like Us. Standout shows and moments, then. Oh, yeah. That, that'd be an interesting one. Which ones are your, I mean, it's like asking which one's your favorite child. Which one is your favorite episode, then, or which episodes or moments from the show mm. stand out? So that is such a loaded one. So I have two kind of answers because if you're going by, um, all episodes, all of all types. Our survivor episodes are absolutely phenomenal. The first one that we did on episode 10, we talked to Jeremy Evans, who was mauled like three times by a grizzly bear in the Canadian outback and was mauled within about half an inch of his life. And I'm not exaggerating. He was extremely amazing to hear him recount the tale, how he survived, what went through his brain. Um, and then just recently for our 20th episode, we sat down with Kristen Yalder, who was attacked by a hippopotamus while um, 
she's like a wildlife photographer and she was in Africa. She got attacked by a hippo. So that was phenomenal. It's just meeting these amazing, amazing people, these human examples of just endurance and strength. And they have the brightest attitudes and they joke and they laugh. And I'm like, even on my worst day, I don't think I'm I mean, on my best day, I'm not near as happy as they are on their worst. They're just tremendous, amazing people. So it's really cool to sit down and talk to people like that. Um, But if we're going by just our fatality episodes, the Tim Treadwell episode is probably my favorite just because I've been met with some serious, um, like, good praise for that. I, I didn't watch it, but I hear that my episode covered more facts than the documentary that was released by Werner Herzog about his life. So I was very proud of that. I heard that a couple times. Um, really cool to get the deep down story about somebody that's very widely known um, throughout the naturalist community and the animal attack community. So that was probably the favorite. So what have you got coming up then that you're really looking forward to? And have you got a dream episode? Uh, a dream episode? Well, probably a crossover episode with the tooth and claw guys because it would just be really cool for the people that inspired me to start a podcast if we did some kind of had them as a guest that's way in the future because they're like big time big time podcast guys Uh, but that would be super cool otherwise every 10 episodes we have survivors so i'm really looking forward to whoever we line up for the 30th episode um, I'm really excited for some new themes that we have in our Patreon and we just opened our Patreon on Halloween. So excited for that to potentially grow. I say potentially with a very hopeful twinkle. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just kind of advancing and growing and continuing to meet really cool people throughout this endeavor. Is there a difference between what you're putting out in the normal feed and if people follow you and join pay your Patreon page, what are they getting on there that, dare I say, that they're not getting in the normal feed? Of course. Well, they're getting a lot. So we put a lot of thought and effort into our Patreon tiers. The difference between the main episodes and the Patreon episodes is our main episodes are structured completely different. So we always start off with interactive things. We'll have a guest. We'll talk to them a little bit. We'll talk about our question of the week. Um, We have listeners that will respond to that. So we'll talk about their answers. We will go into the story. We'll tell the joke of the day. We'll you know, all those kind of structured segments. So for our Patreon, it's a lot different. We don't have those segments. We have in place of those segments, we have games. And so like you said, the the game that you listened to, which was Alphaholics, which is having a conversation where the first word of every sentence is an ascending letter in the alphabet. That one tricks people a lot. Um, we also play games like um, have a conversation where you can't say the letter C Uh, We have games where you have to listen for somebody to say, wow, during the episode. I mean, Mad Libs, we have just a ton. It's it's kind of like whose line is it anyways, if you've ever seen that show or they have just ridiculous little games. So we'll play some games and we get to know our guests and then we also tell a story. Our Patreon stories are a little harsher. Um, A lot of them are a lot gorier than what we put on our main episodes. So there's some really well-known cases that are really disturbing and have like video evidence and stuff like that. And we'll post that on our Patreon just because those are still things that interest us. But sometimes I feel like that goes a little too much for the general public. So if you're into gore and you like stuff like the Russian lathe video or not like, but if it interests you, um, that's the kind of stuff that we tear into on our Patreon. We go in depth into learning the whole story behind these videos and these viral videos. And, um, and then we play games to kind of cheer yourself up before and after. So what sort of frequency are you releasing all these? Cause I mean, you, you put, a lot, yeah. you're putting out a lot of, there's a lot We're of products. Out a lot. It is. Our main episodes are bi-weekly, so they only come out one every two weeks on Tuesdays. And then our Patreon episodes come out every Friday. So if you're on Patreon, you get every two weeks a double whammy and then one to last you until the next. Um, we also have tiers including like merchandise, behind the scenes content, Discord channel access. We have, as you could tell, you know, like merchable, tangible stuff. Um Eventually down the line, we'll be looking at merch, although that's that's going to be a couple months out yet before we determine who we're using for that. But they all have their own different incentives to want to join, for sure. There's some good ones in there. <laughs> okay, so what, what advice would you give to somebody wanting to start their own podcast? I would say don't let any blockade, like a physical blockade stop you. So don't let the fact that you don't have all the money to buy tech and you don't have the the nicest equipment or, I mean, that stuff is all 
things that you'll learn as you go. I, I don't think you should sit on a passion and wait until you have the money to fund it. I think if it's something that you have an interest in and you want to do it, just do it. And you're going to find people regardless of what the issues are that like what you're putting out there. And they're the ones that are going to motivate you to do better. And so then when you are able to afford that new microphone, or you are able to get that new computer, you can do so. And you've already learned a little bit into podcasting. So you can start out at a much better place than if you spend all this money on getting a tech and then you sit down, you don't know how to use it. So that would be my advice is just don't wait. Just if it's a passion, it's something you want to do, just start it and let it take you where it takes you. Yeah. Because like I, like I said about your own show, you know, you started with very little tech wise. Very but, little. <laughs> but as I said, you know, you've got the content there. And, and, I, and I thought this is really good content. Like I said, you know, it's really good content that at the beginning, but, but very difficult to hear what you, yeah. what you were saying. But, but you we're know, gonna as, fix as that come now on, that, that I got. that's all fixed now. <laughs> That's all fixed now. It's much better quality now. But yeah, so and I, I, I still say that if people are interested in quality, you know, product, then sometimes they'll let let go of the, you know, they'll they'll go, you know, well, okay, the sound's not brilliant, but but it's a quality show. And I think if people push through these things, they might get more more out of out of it in a, in a way. Absolutely. And we're not for everybody and I don't anticipate to be, so there's going to be people that click on and click off, but it's just, it's, if you're wanting to be invested in a show and not just hear a couple episodes, if you really want to be invested, I think hearing the growth is, is the best way to relate to them on that level. So our fans that have been with us on Instagram and our listeners since day one, um, we've grown really close to them because they've been supporting us since before we had all of this stuff. So not to say that our newer friends aren't the same, but it's, it's a different level of, of friendship and getting to know each other when you have somebody supporting you from when you're, when you have nothing until you have actually have, you know, a good number of downloads coming in or you're making charts, whatever they may be. So, yeah. Absolutely. So what other podcasts do you like to listen to now that you are listening to podcasts? <laughs> Most of my friends, <laughs> they all have podcasts that I've that I've met through this that have podcasts. So, oh my gosh, there's so many where to start. So we have my friend Kevin, where the weird ones are. He does a great podcast, um, Total Conundrum. They do a really good, very similar theme with like the true crime and the cryptid stuff. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose track of all the amazing ones that there are because I can't even rattle them off. But Brutal Bazaar and Boozy is up there. Um Oh my gosh. Tommy Columns with Let's Get Freaky. I feel like I should have had a list because I can't off the top of my head <laughs> rattle them off super quick. But Cryptid Warfare, there's just so many um, that I listen to and I try to keep up with them. Suspended Sentence. I should have had a list. I'm forgetting people, but I, should, I listen to a lot. <laughs> so do I. So do I. Anyway, thank you for speaking with me today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was so great and getting to talk to you and learn a little bit and, and go through the evolution of one, nothing it was exciting for me. A little trip down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, yes. Cause it's, yeah. So um, where can people find you and get hold of you? Sure. So um, we can be reached on just about every social media platform. At least we're trying to so run Instagram and TikTok and X and Facebook, all that under one, nothing podcast. Uh, our email is one, nothing podcast at gmail.com. And we are on every podcast platform that I could find. So major ones, little ones, we're on all of them. I really, really love people who um, interact and give us feedback. So if you like what we're doing, give us a five stars. If you don't, please tell us, but please maybe don't read us <laughs> unless you really, really have to. <laughs> yeah. Let us know first before, before you, yeah. before you do that, before you knock please the stars off. Yeah. One star and dash. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's harsh. I know. That's harsh. Well, like, at least give me feedback. Yeah. If you're going to do that, just don't listen and don't bother giving us a rating at all. Yeah. I would appreciate it. <laughs> Ratings matter. They do. It, it's what helps people choose what to listen to and it helps boost podcasts up so that they're more noticeable in the libraries so um those help the most so thank you for anyone who decides to head over and give us a, a little nice review and a nice rating i appreciate that okay thank you for speaking with me today thank you for Listen. having me thank you you can find pods like us on uh facebook instagram twitter tiktok and threads and you can contact us through pods like us at gmail.com and since I've since we've mentioned Patreon, I'll mention it this time. You can also find Pods Like Us on Patreon, 
where you get extra bonus uh, bits and pieces for the small amount of a pound a month. It's very reasonable. I've only got one one uh, one level and one tier, and it's just just that. That's all I've got at the moment. So. I think it's working. It's working. No hate. <laughs> no hate. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening, and hope you listen again to another episode of Pods Like Us. <laughs> Thank you.